Thanks for wearing socks, buddy. Really classing it up. Thanks for wearing socks. Material <laughs> socks. Uh, just because I kind of like putting my thumb up my ass, that doesn't make me gay, right? He's wrong about that, right? And can anyone else back me up on this? Well, you're all busy ordering drinks. Okay. Ah, next to the stage, good God, my best friend. Please, put your hands together for Nate Mitchell. Ah! Yes. Okay, and put your hands together for Blue Fields and Chris Patton. Woo! What the hell are you guys clapping for? I said, put your hands together. Let's pray that they get funnier, all right? <laughs> Ooh, all right, I'm trying to be a better guy towards Luke. And, uh, you know, like, uh, recently I had breakfast at the Grit, you know, a place that I avoided. Yeah, I'll explain some other time, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the, the, the nucleus of our feud. But uh, yeah, I had breakfast at the Grit, and I went in there, and uh, I was coaxed in by the lady friend. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to order something that uh, reminded me of, of Ted Hafer, the owner, and uh, so I ordered pancakes. I got the mixed berry and walnut. I wanted to be reminded of congealed blood and bone fragments. Oh my god. Fuck you. That is some tasteless humor. Speaking of tasteless, Jessica's opened up a new pizza place. <laughs> Jessica Hafer. Yes. Taking the plunge with a new business. Yes. Hope it makes an impact on downtown. All right. <laughs> all right. These are all for Luke. These jokes. I'm sorry. Comedy's got... Oh, hold on a second! I'm tall! <laughs> it's hard to write good comedy when you're in a good relationship. It's, it's true. Like, uh, lately things are going great in that department, so unfortunately all the material that I had that dealt with shittiness was, uh, it's not relevant anymore, and I can't tell those jokes. And it sucks! Because it's lately I've been saying, I, it's just say baby, uh, calling someone baby, you know? Like, I say baby more often than a Hollywood agent these days. Like, it's everything, oh, baby, I love you, I love you, baby. <laughs> You know, and it's just like finding someone that, you, you know, you actually click with, you know, and, you know, it's, using condoms has never been an issue. Like, I love that. Because we all know condom sex sucks. It's true. Because, you know, I, I, I fervently believe that, you know, you should treat a vagina like your parents treated your Halloween candy when you were a kid, you know, and just give it the once over, you know, like, all right. You know, no scabs, no sores, no pustules. We are good to go. Like we met the, at, at, at Doug Stanhope concert. Concert? Well, performance. It's a concert. <laughs> you know, so like, you know, it's just like stuff like, you know, I'm just like, all right, we're not using the condoms. So I'm like, you know, what if you get pregnant? And uh, she's like, well, if I get pregnant, then, you know, one of the three of us has to die. <laughs> Love you. I mean, there's a few downsides. Like sometimes she says, you know, she doesn't want to have sex because she has a headache. And you know, and I'm understanding, and I go, well, that's okay because I have a headache too. She goes, oh really? And I go, yes. Sperm retention headache. And then I rape the shit out of her. <laughs> Fresh, young, hap, hot, hip, happening, hip hop group. <laughs> you know, the uh, the Odd Future, Wolf Pack, Kill 'Em All. Or, yeah. yeah. You like them? Right. Oh. You know of them? Oh, good. Well, I'm, just, well, I'm so glad. Um, this joke will make a lot of sense. I don't know. They got a, they're controversial because they're like 16 year old kids and they uh, they uh, you know put a lot of like rape references in their lyrics, so like some people are dead set against them for that. Other people are like, ah, oh, they're just kids, you know, what do they know? And, uh, 
I don't know, but I'm like, hey, rape references. I'm like, I could get in on this because, like, you know, I, I like to have my, my finger on the pulse of what's going on. So uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, throw my hat in the ring. A little character that I developed called the Rapping Rapist. I'm kind of from a different uh, generation of hip hop, so you have to excuse my Curtis Blow like delivery, but. Um, <laughs> I'm the rap and rapist, so don't you know, and I'm gonna violate your every hole. You're gonna find out. Eventually, I like to have sex non-consensually. <laughs> Tie you to the bed, spread eagle. You're gonna, I hope you voted to keep abortion legal. First I'ma rape you, then I'ma scrape you. No babies when I sex last videotape you. Yeah, and that's me. R-A-P-P to the I-N-G to the R-A-P to the I-S-T. Oh shit, here comes the G-H-B. Coming at you with a bottle of rope and all. Tie you up like secretary's Maggie Gyllenhaal. <laughs> Who am I? What's behind the mask? Well, I'm so glad you asked. My favorite video game is Space Invaders. My favorite, the favorite Depeche Mode album is Violator. <laughs> I'm the rapper and rapist. I'm the Master G. I'm so glad you didn't consent. <laughs> I think there was more to that, but I forgot. Yeah. I wrote it at work. Um, <laughs> All right, so uh, it's a milestone tonight. Milestone tonight because we have uh, uh, Mr. Clayton English, our first dark-skinned comedian, also beardless, I hope. Um, so uh, anyway, I think that's, that's nice. Um, you know, I mean, he's probably not used to uh, clubs like this, or at least not as used to the clubs carried by police officers. All the clubs that Luke's make, Luke's make, blah, 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 never mind, never mind. <laughs> so I'll finish it. Drink um, there's a way. The Luke, so oh, never mind. <laughs> the clubs that Luke makes him carry when they go golfing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was terribly bungled there. <laughs> anyway, I got another joke. Um, so, you know, I grew up in the, the, the 80s, and uh, back then we had the, the, the Cabbage Patch Kids. And uh, as you know, uh, some of the Cabbage Patch Kids were black. And uh, I'm thinking that maybe they planted uh, collard greens a little close to the cabbages. <laughs> a little mix-up at the nursery. <laughs> Look at that, my notes, and they look like a Bosquiet painting, like, there's so much stuff on here. Information overload. Um, where, okay, I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, okay, here's a part, a thing that I wrote, uh, it's called Favorite Parts of the Bible. And, uh, yeah. it's kind of music nerdy. Is there, is Big Andy here? No, shit, he's like the one person I thought that might get all of these jokes, but, alright. I'm going to throw it out there because this is a Caledonian, it's a rock club and not a comedy club, so anyway, this is my, uh, my thing called Favorite Parts of the Bible. Alright, what is a thrash metalhead's favorite part of the Bible? What? The book of Exodus. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is some serious music nerds. Alright, what is... A skinhead's favorite and a crust punk's least favorite part of the Bible. What? The book of Job. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what is a straight edge hardcore kid's favorite part of the Bible? What? The book of Revelation. <laughs> also acceptable, the book of Mormon and the entire New Testament. <laughs> This is what I'm going to leave you on. A joke. <laughs> Why do so many metalheads convert to Judaism? Why? Why? Because the New Testament stuff isn't as good as the Old Testament stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. My name's Nate Mitchell. Yeah. Ow! Keep it going for Nate, everybody.